My name is Keith Barry, and I'm the dean and co-founder of the Silver Lake Conservatory of Music. We are a music school, and we are a nonprofit. We give free music lessons to families that couldn't otherwise afford it. We have existed now for 15 years. Our new campus here has been designed by the architect Barbara Bester, and it is a beautiful new permanent home for our school. We offer free music lessons to families that couldn't otherwise afford it. We are currently giving full scholarships to about 35% of our uh, enrollment, and we seek to make that to be 50% of our enrollment. We also have uh, a number of different ensemble programs. We have uh, several choirs of different uh, age groups. We have a, a couple orchestra groups now. We also have contemporary music combos, and that is a big part of our program moving forward, and something that is greatly facilitated by having a full-featured rehearsal space in our campus. The uh, genesis of the Silver Lake Conservatory was uh, really uh, going way back to Flea and I being high school classmates at Fairfax High School, class of 1980. Years ago, before we started here, we, we were nebulously talking about the idea of making a music school. And, and I think the thing that, the event that really sort of precipitated and kicked it off was Flea going back to our uh, high school. And he was shocked to find out that the uh, orchestra and band department where we had spent all of school and was crucial to our lives uh, was no more. We realized that this was the time and place to do it. We had already scheduled a grand opening a community a ribbon cutting welcome. The Rebirth Brass Band played that event and uh, many hundreds and hundreds of people showed up and uh, we had a tremendous New Orleans style parade outside. Barbara Bester uh, designed a beautiful school in here. We are here today uh, showing by Barbara Bester. Uh, she's the principal of Bester Architecture. This project started when the Silver Lake Conservatory bought this building. It was kind of a long time coming. It was this really great local nonprofit that was in a little storefront over in Sunset Junction. The conservatory was looking for space and then they found this really cool building that I think they liked particularly because of its kind of old world Hollywood aspect, that it's a, it's a beautiful old brick building. So part of our goal, sort of urbanistically, was tying it into some of the stuff going on on this side of East Hollywood. One of the things we did was re-emphasize some of the brickwork that had been um, kind of obscured by the additions, and so we painted these highlights and kind of created a pattern that's related to sort of the original. It's a building um, that that opens up. I think building community was really one of the main tasks in this project. We really wanted to have a lobby that was sort of a street-friendly mm -hmm. pedestrian lobby. And the way that the school works, almost all the people who teach here are working musicians and the school ends up being a kind of extended living room for those mm -hmm. people. This space is really trying to have a whole bunch of different atmospheres. There's a kind of intimate lobby thing. There's really intimate lesson rooms which are acoustically isolated from each other. And they, they are what makes up these sort of expressionist village. You know, there's a series of 12 different lesson rooms that are very small mm -hmm. and have different ceiling heights and different and, and overall different um, volume. I saw the village in plan, I imagined the village in plan with the circulation, but now I see the village in elevation, you know, and then you can see it here. You know, there's a pitch roof, and as you mentioned that the section of these buildings, they have this poche between the acoustics interior, which is one, and then the form on the outside. And I think that as a kind of section that you cut through, I mean, it's really, you know, it, it makes you look up in a way, uh -huh. you know, you don't just go, you start to see these geometries uh, in vertical. It really, it's a little bit like quartz or a, some kind of, you know, crystal or a disco ball even, just like stuck in the middle of space to kind of move light around and, and in a way energize and animate some of the sort of little highways and byways that go around it. In a way, the program of the sort of acoustic small lesson rooms generated that kind of bigger, let's say, Caligari-esque kind of you know, village volume because really you want to have as many walls that are irregular and ceiling structures as possible in order to you know keep sound from sort of bouncing too much. So now we're upstairs in the mezzanine. This mezzanine was always meant to be sort of like a floating piece so that you could see on the one hand the kind of village of lessons and on the other hand the performance space. You take things that are you know construction issues, code issues, and so on, and then you just, you find ways in which they can become design opportunities. So if you can tell us a little bit about how this sheer wall becomes an opportunity to create, you know, more effects. 
we decided to try to create the illusion of continuity that the beautiful bowstring truss building would just sort of keep going through. Mm -hmm. And basically it worked. So it looks like the ceiling continues. So we sort of get a really nice open feeling. So the pieces that are the more intact volumes, you know, volume within the volume are really legible still because we were able to put this clear window below this. But at the same time, you kind of have that, that larger sense of space. So I think it's interesting, you know, going back to wood against artificial effects, you know, mm -hmm. how you always, in your work, you pair those two. I feel like a lot of my work when I started out was essentially adaptive reuse and that you're inserting something in an existing context. One of my goals is to sort of really demarcate existing and then additions and mm -hmm. in, in a different way. It's like for us, the, the new wood that we added is almost artificial looking, mm -hmm. like it's this oak veneer. I think it's very different than the sandblasted fur that's in the ceilings or in the tresses. We're here now in the auditorium. This is an auditorium, but it's like a flexible room. Also, the fact that it opens to the outside, I think it's, you know, makes this space indoors, outdoors. If you're having a fundraiser or cocktail party, you don't actually need to dampen the space. Mm -hmm. And then we open the outside and the outside has a tent and it's kind of like a whole pretty large usable space for the, that kind of thing. One of the things about the conservatory is that they have all kinds of different sized events. So there's, a, there's an adult chorus of about 50 people. If they're doing uh, something informal, they use this space because it you know, allows them to sort of spread out more if they're doing any choreography. If it's say like a recital, you know, there's a permanent grand piano in this space. You can kind of set it up for 20 people, 50 people. Another nice feature here, um, which is, is the donor wall. And, and it's interesting because it's, it's, these brass plates mimic uh, bricks, I guess. You know, they have like the size of the brick. And then, you know, your comment of, it can grow forever, you know? It's like, you know, welcome donors to the conservatory. But I think that kind of um, look back at the community and the city, and then, you know, it's like everybody can really help in kind of building up the space. It's like really going brick by brick, you know? I mean, these brass bricks. This is really the beginning of the, of the conservatory's new home, and, you know, for the next 50 years, there might be more events and more kinds of donations being sought out. So the idea was, what would be something that would be infinitely expandable? And looking at the space, because it is a brick room, I thought, well, if we do something that relates to that, we can kind of use that surface. So ultimately, we can kind of keep spreading across, you know, like kudzu mm -hmm. on all the walls of this building. Thank you, Barbara, for this lovely conversation, and thank you for uh, showing us uh, the space. And thank you for joining us uh, at Sire Channel.